Welcome back to Football Daily, where we're looking at the 10 biggest losers of the transfer window this summer. Not everyone will be thrilled with the business that took place. Let's look at the 10 people who came off worst. 10. Gilfie Sigurdsson Carlo Ancelotti must be thrilled after seeing his Everton midfield revamped with the quality signings of Alan, Abdullah Dukure, and the showstopper James Rodriguez. The Toffees have enjoyed an unbeaten start to the season, with that new trio receiving plenty of plaudits. However, their arrival has made it difficult to see how any of their previous midfielders, bar Andre Gomes, can wrestle their way back into the starting eleven. In particular, Gilfie Sigurdsson, the Icelandic captain, who's paying the price for a dismal 2019-20. The former Swansea man, who once commanded a price tag close to £45 million, experienced an alarming slump in form that saw him deliver just five goal involvements all season. Both his key passes and shots per game numbers plummeted, while his expected goals and assists per 90 rate hit a career low of 0.14. So far, despite four appearances, he's only played a third of the available minutes in the league with just one assist to his name. Now 31, Sigurdsson has been an ever-present in the English top flight since 2011. However, while the Hammers show shines bright, the Icelander will have to get used to life on the sidelines. 9. Chelsea Academy while clubs across Europe tightened the purse strings, Chelsea went wild, splashing over £200 million on glitzy new recruits. Kai Havertz, Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech, just a few of the names who've rocked up at Stamford Bridge. It looked like a dream come true for every Chelsea fan. However, the same can't be said for the academy products who've watched their path to the first team blocked by an array of expensive imports. It's especially challenging after a season that gave them so much hope, with Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham and Rhys James all examples of youth products finally being given a chance to shine in the Premier League. Already it looks like it'll be a struggle for Fikayo Tomori to start regularly, while Callum Hudson-Odoi may regret falling for the charm offensive that saw him extend his deal in West London. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, meanwhile, has spent the entire window linked with a route out of Stamford Bridge. Lampard's new signings will all be expecting to play, so don't count on their academy getting many chances anymore. 8. Nicolas Taliafico Nicolas Taliafico must be wondering what he needs to do to leave Ajax. One of the few remaining stars from their surprising Champions League semi-final run in 2019, the Argentine has waited patiently while the likes of Frankie de Jong, Matthias de Ligt and now Donny van der Beek have all departed Amsterdam. But after countless rumours have come and gone, the 28-year-old is still a part of die Gordonzonen. It's still a surprise no one has taken a chance on the left-back. He followed up six goal involvements in the Eredivisie during 1819 with a further seven last season. In the Champions League, he averaged a massive 10.2 defensive actions per game while managing two dribbles and key passes per 90, showing himself to be one of the most versatile fullbacks in the competition. It must have been hard then to see 19-year-old Serginho Dest get snapped up by Barcelona and still no offers arrive, with his reported £35 million valuation putting off suitors. Of course, he may yet get his move one day, but turning 29 soon, he won't have many years to show his ability at the top of the game. 7. Marek Rodak Joe Bryan may have been the hero at Wembley for Fulham, but a key figure all season during their promotion to the Premier League was Marek Rodak in goal. After claiming the number one spot from Marcus Bettinelli, Rodak never looked back and finished the campaign with the best save percentage in the division. He also maintained a 42% clean sheet rate and made the second most saves of any keeper in the championship. That's despite only playing 33 games from a possible 46, and Rodak's form even saw him earn a starting berth for Slovakia, topping off his rise to prominence. Everything suggested the 23-year-old was ready for a crack at the Premier League, but it appears Fulham have decided otherwise. After just one game, Rodak was dropped, with new signing Alphonse Ariola installed in goal for the 4-3 defeat away at Leeds United. Ominously, this is reminiscent of the disastrous 2018-19 Premier League season, when Bettinelli was immediately dropped for Fabri and then Sergio Rico. After all Rodak's effort in getting Fulham promoted, it's a shame to see Scott Parker's loyalty swayed so soon in the year. 6. John Stones if John Stones needed more clarification that Pep Guardiola doesn't rate him, the Spaniard splashing over £100 million on two new centre-backs must surely be it. First, Nathan Ake arrived from relegated Bournemouth before the much-fancied Ruben Diaz finally left Benfica in a £65 million move. Stones was struggling to beat Nicolas Otamendi to a spot on the right side of defence, so with Diaz arriving there, Stones will have his work cut out trying to start ahead of the young Portuguese sensation. All the stats suggest the 23-year-old could be the all-round defensive star City have been craving. Last season, Diaz completed a quality 3.1 clearances per 90, averaged 67 passes per game at an impressive 89% success rate, and importantly was only dispossessed 0.5 times per game. Compared to Stones, who frequently comes under fire for losses of focus in matches, Diaz is a trusted pair of hands. 
With Otamendi on his way to Benfica, there's still a place for the England international in Guardiola's squad. However, don't expect to see him as a regular starter anytime soon. 5. Wilfried Zaha It's an all too familiar story for Wilfried Zaha in the transfer window, who's once again failed to get his dream move away from Crystal Palace. The Ivorian has made no secret of his desire to leave, with Roy Hodgson admitting as much in public. But while the ridiculous five-year contract Zaha signed back in 2018 still looms over his head, the Eagles will feel no pressure to sell their one-to-way star on the cheap. Palace continue to value the 27-year-old in the 40 to 50 million pound bracket, which is a hefty chunk of money for a winger who only managed seven goal involvements in 2019-20. However, three goals in the opening two games this season, including a double away to former club Man United, presented Zaha as a man back in form. But with no obvious exit route on the table, the former England under-21 star will have to be content with another season at Selhurst Park. The additions of Eberechieze and Michi Bachwai should have improved his mood around the training ground, but there's no doubt his European ambitions have slipped further from his grasp. 4. David Wagner You can't help but feel sorry for David Wagner. The former Huddersfield town boss looked back to his best in charge of Schalke, having guided them to fourth in the Bundesliga by mid-January 2020, close on the heels of leaders RB Leipzig. But then disaster struck. Die Königsblauen failed to win any of their final 16 games, losing on nine occasions, and went crashing down the division. The club's board agreed to support Wagner, though did him absolutely no favours in the transfer market. As part of cost-cutting measures, Schalke were reduced to loan and free signings, bringing in a 36-year-old Veda Dibisovic and Eintracht Frankfurt pair Gonzalo Paciencia and Frederick Ronoff. Meanwhile, Bayern pinched their keeper Alexander Nubel, while Weston McKennie headed to Juventus. Armed with essentially the same squad that had been demoralised just a few months ago, it was always going to be tough to start afresh. Sure enough, Schalke have been miserable so far, destroyed 8-0 by Bayern Munich before slumping to a 3-1 defeat at home to Werder Bremen. That proved the final straw for Wagner, who was given his marching orders. If the 48-year-old stood any chance of rejuvenating his Gelsenkirchen project, a big summer of activity was vital. That never arrived, and he's ultimately paid the price. 3. Max Ahrens it's not every day Barcelona come calling, especially when you ply your trade in the championship. But that's exactly what happened to Max Ahrens, the Norwich City right-back who's made quite the impression at Carrow Road. The Englishman was excellent as Daniel Farker's side sealed promotion to the Premier League back in 2018-19, completing more dribbles than any teenager in the division and the second most interceptions. His time in the top flight, however, wasn't so fortuitous, only registering one assist as the Canaries went crashing straight back down. But that hasn't stopped the big boys of world football eyeing him up. It was reported that the 20-year-old even agreed personal terms with Barcelona, though they hesitated when pushed to guarantee a £20 million obligation to buy. And his heartbreak was confirmed when Serginho Dest signed from Ajax to fill that right-back slot. Meanwhile, he had to see Emi Buendia linked with a big payday at Fenerbahce, Jamal Lewis returned to the Premier League with Newcastle United, and Ben Godfrey attract interest from Everton. Bayern Munich were rumoured to hold an interest in a late move for Ahrens, along with Roma and AC Milan, but for now, it seems he's staying in Norfolk. After all the talk and rumours, it must be a tough pill for Ahrens to swallow. 2. United Fringe Stars it's no secret that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wanted to sell a number of Man United fringe stars this summer. Marcus Rojo, Jesse Lingard, Diogo Dalot and Sergio Romero are just a few of the forgotten faces at the club who needed a move to keep their careers alive. But sadly for all concerned, interest in them has been almost non-existent. Part of the issue has been the stubborn prices that United have demanded. According to various reports, Ed Woodward is determined to recoup £20 million for Dalot, and a further 7.4 million for Rojo. But considering Dalot only made 11 appearances last season, with four in the Premier League, that seems unlikely. It's the same issue that kept Chris Smalling from sealing an early return to Roma, with the Red Devils refusing to budge on their £18 million asking price for the 30-year-old. Rojo, meanwhile, has been hamstrung by his astronomical wages, with 80k a week turning suitors away, a similar problem to that faced by Lingard and Sergio Romero. As it stands, Solskjaer faces another year with a bloated squad and an enormous wage bill inevitably holding the club back. 1. Josep Bartomeu Barcelona president Josep Bartomeu has suffered a summer that will surely haunt him for years to come. Fresh off watching his side get destroyed by Bayern Munich in the Champions League, he moved to fire Kike Setien and replace him with the brash and abrasive Ronald Koeman. Bartomeu then decided he'd seen enough of Luis Suarez, agreeing with Koeman that the club's third highest scorer ever had no place at the camp now. But this only triggered further disaster. 
Already on the brink of misery following their end of the season failure, club legend Leo Messi did the unthinkable and requested a transfer. Though the Argentine didn't get his move, the resulting war of words and fact he felt compelled to ask for it in the first place have blotched Bartomeu's paper beyond recognition. All the drama has overshadowed any business actually done in the market, including the signing of Miralem Pjanic and Francisco Trincao. In 12 months time the Catalonian giants will vote to elect a new president of the club. And after everything that's happened this summer, they'll be glad to see the back of Bartomeu. So those are our 10 biggest losers of the summer window, but who do we miss out and who would you have included? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell to never miss a video. We'll see you next time.